title for this afternoon's lesson is The Little Foxes. It's from the Song of Solomon, chapter 2, verse 15. The first time I remember hearing this, I was a teenager, and the young preacher who was preaching in my hometown brought a lesson on this. And not all lessons stick, but the title and the main message of this lesson stuck. I've heard this lesson preached since then, and I've seen it in in uh, sermon outline books and written about at various, various occasions. We need to realize whenever we read God's word that many times Bible re the Bible does reference various animals to teach principles and to teach lessons for God's people. For instance, in Amos 3 verse 5, he asked the question, can a bird fall in a snare upon the earth where no gin is for him? Shall one take up a snare from the earth and have taken nothing at all? God is going to destroy Israel, and he's letting Israel know that in this case. In Jeremiah 12, verse 9, My heritage is unto me as a, as a speckled bird. The birds round about her against her. Come ye, assemble all the beasts of the field. Come to devour. There's a song written about the great speckled bird at one time, and uh, he's saying that his heritage has become like a speckled bird, not a bird that's clean, not a bird that's pure, but a great, a speckled bird, as it were, and he's calling the nation round about to observe and to assemble and see the end of this speckled bird. The stork, the crane, the swallow, and the turtle are all so found in God's word for lessons for God's people. Jeremiah 8, verse 7, Yea, the stork in the heaven, north her appointed time, the turtle and the crane and the swallow observe the time of their coming, but my people know not the judgment of the Lord. You know, it's interesting, the birds do know when to migrate, don't they? They do know set appointed times, don't they? They, they, they know when it's time to build their nest. They know when it, it's time to leave an area. And so it is that we have lessons from these contained in the word of God. Even the lions are found in Jeremiah 12, verse 8. My heritage is unto me as a lion in the forest. It crieth out against me, therefore have I hated it. We was talking about that this, this afternoon in our Bible class, the fact that, that Israel had turned against God. Like a lion turns against, against a, a person, an individual. And so Israel had become like a lion who, would, who fought against God. But yet God would destroy that lion. For, now, in Proverbs 30, verse 24, we have four things that are little but wise. And guess what he uses? He uses animals, doesn't he? Proverbs 30, verse 24, there be four things which are little upon the earth, but they are exceeding wise. And what are they? Well, Proverbs 30, 25 says, the ants are a people not strong. Yet they prepare their meat in the summer. So what's God doing? He's teaching lessons with animals. The conies are rock badgers. The New King James Version has. Proverbs 30, verse 26. The conies are but a feeble folk. You might put rock badgers there. Yet they make their houses in the rocks. The word cony, uh, according to uh, uh, Easton's Bible Dictionary, is an animal which inhabits the mountain gorges and the rocky districts of Arabia and the Holy Land. It's about the size and color of a rabbit, though clumsier in structure without a tail. Its feet are not formed for digging, and therefore it has its home, not in burrows, but in the cliffs of the rocks. Also, we see the locust. Now, the locust here are grasshoppers. They're not our 17-year cicadas that come out, or seven-year cicadas, or the different, different things that we usually refer to as locusts. These are grasshoppers. Proverbs 30, verse 27 says, The locusts have no king, yet they go forth all of them by bands. What's he doing? He's teaching a lesson. We, it's one of the wise things. And also, what else? The spider, in verse 28, The spider taketh hold with their hands and is in king's palace. And not everyone can dwell in a king's palace, can they? But the spider does. He uses horse and monkey, horse and monkey, horse and mule and donkey. In Psalms 32, verse 9, Be not as the horse or as the mule, which have no understanding, whose fat mouth must be held in with a bit and bridle, lest they come near thee. In Jeremiah 5, verse 8, They were 
has fed horses in the morning, every one night after his neighbor's wife. That's pretty clear, the sin that was prevalent there. Isaiah 1 verse 3, the ox knoweth his owner, and the donkey his master's crib, but Israel doth not know, my people doth not consider. And so he's comparing God's people with animals that have knowledge that God's people don't even have at that time. But tonight, tonight, I said all that so I could get to the foxes. Tonight we're going to talk about the little foxes. Psalm of Solomon 2, verse 15. Take us the foxes, the little foxes that spoil the vines, for our vines have tender grapes. Picture, if you will, a pleasant vineyard surrounded by a fence designed to keep the hungry animals away from the tender and juicy grapes. The large animals cannot enter, but the foxes, the little foxes, can squeeze through and eat the tender grapes. Thus, Destroying the produce, or at the very least, keeping profits low. There's a great lesson for us in this passage. If we think of the foxes as being sins, then it's just as true for us. Beware of what? The little sins. You know, generally speaking, Christians are not guilty of fornication, drunkenness, stealing, murder, and such like. These, quote, large sins, as we sometimes think of them. But what we as Christians do need to watch for and keep out of our lives are the little sins, just as much as we need to keep the so-called big sins out of our lives. Let's look at some of those sins, some of those little foxes. Profanity, irreverence, things such as nasty jokes, cursing, using God's name in vain, Euphemisms such as G for Jesus, golly for God, heck for hell, and many others. In Exodus 20 verse 7, Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Ephesians 4 verse 29, Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. Here we get into filthy jokes. But that which is good to the use of edifying, that may minister grace unto the hearers. Matthew 12 verse 36, Jesus said, But I say unto you, that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give an account thereof in the day of judgment. We're going to have to answer for the things that we say for using language that we shouldn't use, for profanity, for, for using by words that, that are the same as profanity. You can also check out Matthew 5, verses 33 through 37 for a little bit more on this. Certainly, this little fox, profanity, irreverence, has many Christians, that are, is a fox of dangerous sin that many Christians are not even aware of. There's others. Jealousy and envy is another fox or sin that we might need to watch out for. A little sin in the mind of people because it's not like murder. It's not like stealing. But yet it's a sin. In Galatians 5, 19 through 20, envying is listed along with fornication, adultery, uncleanliness, lasciviousness, witchcraft, <laughs> hatred, variance, emulation, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, murders, drunkenness, revelings. And he goes on and says, and such like. Well, what's he talking about? Envying, having that, that burning zeal uh, for something that doesn't belong to you. Jealousy is certainly a little sin, but eats us up inside. It's one of those little foxes that we need to guard against. Pride, Proverbs 11, verse 2. When pride cometh, then cometh shame. But with the lowly is wisdom. Proverbs 16, 18, pride goeth before destruction, a haughty spirit before fall. In Proverbs 29, 23, a man's pride shall bring him low, but honor shall uphold the humble in spirit. The thing is, with pride, that little fox is something that both rich people and poor can let get past their fence. Some people are just too proud to attend worship, aren't they? They don't have good enough clothes, so they won't come. Pride keeps them from coming. They refuse to correct wrongs sometimes because they're too proud to say, I'm sorry. They're too proud to say I was wrong. There's other foxes that we want to look at and consider. 
malice, selfishness. And I looked this word up because I questioned it. Unforgiveness. <laughs> That's a strange word to me. But let's look at malice first. That's a little fox we need to be aware of. Colossians 3 verse 8. But now you put off all these anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth. 1 Peter 2 verse 16. Be free. And not, not using your liberty as a cloak as a, for a cloak of maliciousness, but as the servants of God. The psalmist in dealing with the wicked wrote in Psalm 7, verses 14 through 16, Behold, he travaileth with iniquity and hath conceived mischief. That's the idea. Bringing about mischief, malice, causing trouble here. And brought forth falsehood. He made a pit and digged it and has fallen into the ditch which he made. Did you catch that? He made a ditch and digged it. He built a trap, set it up, and then he fell into the trap that he built. His mischief shall return upon his own head, verse 16, and his violent dealing shall come down upon his own pate. This last passage reminds us of Haman and his malice toward Mordecai. Remember what happened to Haman? This is a very, very dangerous fox to let to our fence. Selfishness is another fox that we need to be aware of. In 1 Corinthians 13, verse 5, we read of love and the fact that love doth not behave itself unseemly, seeketh not her own. That's selfishness. Wanting what I want and, and at any cost, as it were. I want what I want. I don't care what happens to anybody or what anybody else wants. I want what I want and I'm going to get it. 2 Timothy 3, verse 2, for men shall be lovers of what? Their own selves. Covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy. Many of these things go along with selfishness. Lovers of their own self has to, well, you're going to be covetous. You're going to be a boaster, perhaps. You're going to be proud, maybe a blasphemer. Disobedient to parents, you're going to be unthankful. You're going to be unholy. And so selfishness is a fox we need to guard against. Unforgiveness. Matthew 6, 14 through 15. For if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive you your trespasses. Matthew 18, 21 through 22. Peter asked, how often shall I forgive my brother? Seven till seven times. And Jesus said, uh, not I say not until the end, until seven times, but until 70 times seven. In Luke 17, 3 through 4, he says, if they keep to yourself, if thy brother trespass against thee, rebuke him. Now listen, and if he repent, forgive him. Remember this about forgiveness. You can't just say, I forgive somebody. They have to be willing to accept that forgiveness, to want that forgiveness. And so, if he repents, then forgive him. If he doesn't repent, you can't forgive him. Jesus prayed on the cross, Father, forgive them, right? For they know not what they do. When were they forgiven? Peter said, you've taken, you've crucified the very Son of God. They said, what must we do? Peter said, well, Je Jesus prayed for you on the cross, you've been forgiven. No, that's not what he said, was he? He said, repent and be baptized. Repentance is necessary for forgiveness. And that's why we're commanded to go to someone who offends us. That's talking about a real offense, not an imagined offense, or because I had a chip on my shoulder that day. You know, as we think about these last three, malice, selfishness, and unforgiveness, that's a real sad set of triplets because they hurt us just as much as they hurt anybody else. These indeed are little foxes that spoil the vineyard. There's others. I didn't even mention gossip, did I? There's others that we can talk about, but these are sufficient for a lesson tonight. Yes, for most Christians, it's not the big things that we fall prey to, but the little things. So let us, every one of us, watch for the little foxes, the little foxes that spoil the vineyards. Now the question is, are you a Christian? 
If you're not a Christian, you need to hear the gospel and believe the gospel. Perhaps you already have. John 5 verse 24 says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. You need to repent. Paul told the elders from Ephesus in Acts 20 verse 21, testifying both, this is what he was doing, Paul testifying both to the Jews, also to the Greeks, repentance toward God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. What did he preach? He preached repentance toward God. Uh, Paul, in giving an account of his conversion before Agrippa, also basically said that that's what he preached among both Jews and Gentiles again. Also, you must confess Jesus Christ. After warning the disciples about the persecution, he tells them that they must confess him regardless of even if it costs them their lives. Matthew 10, 32, 33. Whosoever therefore shall confess me before men, him will I confess also before my Father which is in heaven. But whoso shall deny me before men, him will I also deny before my Father which is in heaven. And then... Baptism. This is the last step that takes you into salvation. God adds you to the church. He forgives you of your sin when you obey him in baptism. Galatians 3, 26 and 27 says that, that you're all children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you as have been baptized into Jesus Christ have put on Jesus Christ. Then we read in Ephesians 1, verse 3, that all spiritual blessings are found in Christ Jesus. And then 2 Timothy 2, verse 10 becomes even more specific where Paul writes, therefore I endure all things for the elect's sake, that they may also obtain what? The salvation which is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. Where is salvation found? It's in Christ Jesus. How do you get into Christ Jesus? By being baptized. It's that simple. That's straightforward. That's what the Bible says. Well, then after being baptized, you are a child of God. You've been forgiven of your past sins. But now you must remain faithful. Hebrews 3, verses 12 through 13. Take heed, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief and departing from the living God. But exhort one another daily, and so much the more as you see the day approaching. <laughs> I'm sorry, that's not right. Exhort one another while it's called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. Now that's right. So here we have God's steps of salvation how to stay saved once we, we have our sins forgiven. If you're subject to the invitation of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, then won't you come while together we stand and while we sing?